40 years in the wilderness. To all who were men of war who came out of Egypt perished. Because they did not hearken to the voice of the Lord. Let me say that again. They did not hearken. Say it with me. They did not hearken to the voice of the Lord. To them the Lord swore that he would not let them see the land which the Lord swore to their fathers to give us. A land flowing with milk and honey. I'm going to flip over. I ask you to flip with me real quick to the book of Numbers. Go with me to the book of Numbers 14 and 1. It says, And all the congregation cried, and, and again, I'm reading out the Amplified Bible, so it may read a little different than yours, okay? Numbers 14 and 1 says, And all the congregation cried out with a loud voice, and they wept that night. All the Israelites crumbled, grumbled, and deplored their situations, accusing Moses and Aaron, to whom the whole congregation said, would that had died in Egypt, or that we had died in this wilderness about was why this is a question that they had to ask of God. Why did you lead us out of Egypt to carry us into this wilderness? You could have left us where we were and let us die there. I'm sure you've read the story where Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt. How many of you read that? And how God performed a miracle and parted the Red Sea and made the water stand up like that they may tarry through. This is what the children of Israel were speaking about. Why didn't you just leave us there? In other words, you could have just let us go on drain instead of leading us to this wilderness. In other words, this dry place where no water is flowing, where it's no food to eat. And they journeyed 40 days, what was it, 40 years that they journeyed. The journey, let me help you with something. Let me help you with something. The men that were there already was there 40 days and 40 nights. But when they got there, there was a 40 year experience. The distance, let me help you with something and we're going to be done. We're going to be done right here. The distance from Egypt would have took them 11 days approximately. But instead they were there for you. And you may say, well, why did it take so long? Let me help you. And we're going to be done. The message this morning is a wilderness experience. A wilderness experience. I'm going to classify everybody in here on today. Number one, you're either going through something right now. That's the first category. You're going through something right now. The second category is that you just came out of something. The third category is that you're getting ready to enter in. 
So it hit everybody. That, that, that covered everybody. Either you're going through it right now, or you just came out of it, or you're getting ready to get rid. Now that hit everybody. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But the reason why it took the children of Israel to come out complaining too much. See, when God is working, you don't complain. Yes, he did. Bring them up out of Egypt. And they were still complaining. You brought us out over there, but now we over here. And it was like their lives was a revolving door started going around the same man. Over and over again. But the reason why they didn't come out sooner than what they did because they were stubbornly grumbling and complaining. Instead of thanking God, God inhabits praises. The more you praise Him, the more He going to do something. But the more complaining and grumbling you do, that's the deeper your situation going to get. And it's like a dog. Y'all ever seen a dog go and dig a hole or plant a bone? That's the way we are. We digging our own holes with our own teeth. Because we started complaining. Every time a complaint comes out your mouth, you just went a little deeper. Oh, I'm trying to help. I'm trying to help. You just went a little deeper. I don't care what it is that we're going through, what it is that we're facing, it's no greater than God. Because can now one of you in here stand up and honestly say that your situation is greater than he is? why he don't wear it about delivering us because he know he's able to do it. God don't feel like the devil do when obstacles come in our lives. He just sit back and say, okay, don't worry about it. I'll be there soon. I'm going to show up in a minute. You wearing battle, running here, running there, disgusted, under pressure and God <laughs> sitting just like this. Calm, cool, lay, cool, lay. But you running to and fro. Say, no, what I'm gonna do? What I'm gonna do? I'm running outside. I'm supposed to have this by Friday. The day is Wednesday. God still sitting there. And I think I say goodbye to imagination. Yeah. Son, daughter, if you would just come and be said, you heard me when I told you. I'm going to show up before it's too late. Come on now. But when our spirit is disturbed, you can't hear God. What I'm trying to say to you is, you got to get still. You got to be still and know that God is able. And that he's going to intervene. You know why we get all weary? Let me hear you. Because we try to do it in our own strength. And then when you get the way of small go and see you ain't got enough money. Come on, man. Come on, man. See, I didn't know your account was at Wells Fargo, but he did. So that must have been for you. When you get the way of small go and try to make a withdraw and say, Lord, I'm sure I ain't got what I thought I had. That's when you got to wait on it. Wait on it. 
and say, don't be foolish about it, though. And say, well, since I ain't have enough, I might as well spend this. A little bit is better than nothing. So you need to hold on to that little bit until you get not more, but more. Come on, Tell your neighbor, say more. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Until you get more. Whoa. You got to hold on to that little bit because if you don't, you're going to work yourself even harder trying to get what you had at first. To get what you had at first. Yeah. It's like starting your first work over again. So have some wisdom and say, well, God, you know what? Where are that money? Somebody give me a bill or something. Somebody give me a bill. Don't be scared, y'all. Think y'all got to give it an offer. Somebody give me a bill. Real quick. Real quick. Somebody give me a bill. Give me a bill. Give me a bill. Thank you. We're going to be done. See, God and I already move. I'm just talking to God. permission to do it thing, you need to do it real quick because when you pray, you want him to do it real quick. So you gotta move real quick. Ooh. And I heard the spirit of the Lord saying that you're gonna testify. Now. And I want you to obey the prophets and that's all this way. It's gonna happen, but you gotta do exactly as I say. I want you to just rip a piece of paper off of something. A clear piece of paper. It can be red, you ain't got to be neat with it. Just rip a piece of paper. Because there you go. Because that rip means desperation. <laughs> See, this is an unusual ministry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. See, God was praying for stuff in here. If he tell me to tell y'all to bust that door down, I'm going to say, me and bust that door down. Because if he tell you to bust that door down, that means he's going to enlarge our territory. Come on, I need y'all to 